Let me ask you one question. Do you think we're alone? In this ever-expanding universe, it's highly unlikely that we are. But saying that, does that mean that there's other civilizations visiting Earth? Or are people just imagining the whole thing? In 1966, people's imagination were taken to a whole new plane, with the release of one of the most iconic space TV programs to date. Star Trek was released to the world, and all of a sudden, our screens were filled with spaceships, laser guns, and sexy aliens who Captain Kirk always ended up with. Get it off! After that, our cinemas and TV screens were mental for aliens. Ever since then, we've been fascinated with the thought of other beings from a distant galaxy coming along in their flashy new shiny ships and showing off like it's a boy racer's meet at an Essex car park. But are we really being visited? And if so, how do we prove it? Well, I suppose one way is to visit the internet or watch TV, where there are pictures of what people think aliens look like, which range from the damn right cute to the damn right scary. But there are also millions of videos claiming to be real UFO sightings and proof that extraterrestrial beings are really visiting the Earth. But can these actually be trusted? Especially with the advancements in computer software and the possibility to blur the line between what is real and what is fake. I wanted to see what a professional ufologist's thoughts were on the subject, so I decided to visit one of the UK's most experienced in the field in order to have a chat. Now, a few things that people may or may not know about you. Um, you've worked for NATO, you've got degrees coming out of your ears. Um, <laughs> You've wrote books for the paranormal, you've advised on paranormal programs for the BBC, ITV, Fox TV um, in the US, Hammer Films and even National Geographic to name but a few. Uh, you're an international TV and radio host, freelance journalist oh. and interna international <laughs> lecturer, chairman of MAPIT, which is Manchester's Association of Paranormal Investigation and Training. Um, and you are the director of Phenomena magazine. Now, that's just a short list of what you actually do. Um, I mean, they're serious credentials, aren't they? That's a bit of a mouthful. Intro, it is. Uh, <laughs> tell me a bit about Mappet and the Paranormal magazine. What's, okay. what's the story with that? Um, I somehow came to be um, aware of Mappet in Manchester, followed their work. The, the gentleman in question was Dr. David Rees. And uh, he was the uh, the chairman of Mappet. Now, when David passed away, I took over the organisation. So I became the chairman of Mappet, just by strange coincidence. Um, and as time's gone on over uh, into the sort of early eight, early 90s, people are interested in the field of the paranormal as well as ufological. So we decided to keep the acronym Mappet because it's well known. It's been going since 1974 when David first ran, you know, started the group. I think it's one of, I think it's the fifth or sixth longest running group in the country organisation. Um, we decided to incorporate paranormal phenomena. So we had to keep the acronym, but change the words of what they meant. So mm. now we're Manchester's Association of Paranormal Investigation and Training. You don't say that when you've had a drink, of course. Yeah. Um, but it used to be Manchester Aerial Phenomena Investigation Team. But the thing is, the two have come together. So we still deal with all the ufological type of things. Yeah. Uh, but we also deal with the study of paranormal research as well. So it's kind of a combination. And as for the magazine, that magazine started around about... Um, seven or eight years ago, about eight years ago, I think it was. And it's known as Phenomena Magazine. It's a free, it's a free design. goes out um, all over the world now, uh, every month. Uh, we have 1.8 million subscribers per year. It's in 12 countries. Uh, I think it's the world's largest at this moment in time. Uh, and it covers, it's a magazine which is freely distributed, freely downloaded off the internet. 
Um, you can get it from www.phenomenamagazine.co.uk. Um, and it's available every month in a digital PDF format. Now, we have writers providing information for all, on all subjects. It's a, it's a magazine that covers ufological, paranormal, conspiracy, you name it. The world of the strange and profound. It's all um, situated within the magazine on a monthly, monthly mm. basis. Now, obviously, I'm here to talk about UFOs. Um, before I head out on my little expedition um, <laughs> over to UFO Alley over there in Tombedon. But as far as I'm concerned, I mean, you're the man to come and talk to. I mean, what is a UFO? Well, simply, a UFO is an unidentified flying object. I mean, a lot of people might refer, when you say UFO, people naturally jump to the, you know, the, the, the mindset of it's alien or extraterrestrial in, in origin. In fact, there are more mundane explanations for UFOs than they are something unknown. Um, but it's just a terminology. We have to. There are other terminologies. You know, people have used um, unmanned or un, unknown aerial vehicles, UAVs, and you get different, slightly different terminology dependent on what location or what country you're in as well. But ovnis in in, in Spain, same thing. UFOs, unidentified flying objects. Are we talking about little grey men or something else entirely? What we're we talking about. If, if, well, when I people mean, are talking about aliens, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, the problem is, is that we have to. For us, we have to put a strict divide between those experiences that people refer to as extraterrestrial or alien or whatever, uh, and UFOs, because we never should really put the two together and say, you know, definitely. I think a lot of the UFOs that are seen nowadays is probably um, advanced technology, technological stuff. We're flying around in the aviation authorities and stuff. Um, Secret aircraft, experimental aircraft. There's a lot of things, you know. I mean, we, we there's it, there's enough information out there now to that we do know that we're flying exotic aircraft, which are dish shaped, triangular shaped, have the capabilities of being silent, unusual navigation lighting, if any at all. Um, they can be completely hovering. They can, mm. you know, they they have a, the. the some technology to just hover, move off quickly in certain directions, perform manoeuvres that you'd think, okay, humans wouldn't, wouldn't exist, you know, wouldn't survive in them. In some cases, may not even be manned. Yeah. So we haven't got to comport, come up with those problems. You know, the problematics of how much a human can withstand regarding G-force when they're, un- they're unmanned vehicles. And a lot of things like that in the secret world of technology, which are flying around, the problematics of that is that we will not know. When we look at these things, we just think, okay, it's something strange. I don't know what it is. It's got to be alien. Not necessarily. I think we have to start looking for answers more close to, to home. I'm not saying let's rule that out, though, of course. Yeah. I'm not saying extraterrestrial objects might not exist. I'm saying let's start by looking a little bit closer to home first. Yeah, because I think everybody just jumps on the bandwagon and just automatically says oh, it's yeah. a UFO. Yeah, I mean, it's, we know... It's we know the, this, I mean, I went into... Um, uh, to look at the Tyrannus, which is the it's an unmanned aerial vehicle. Now, according to the British Aerospace, they're not flying it in. It's manufactured here. Mm. It's housed here, but they're not flying it in the UK. They apparently they put it on top of a uh, on top. They put it in an aircraft flight to America and then test flight there. It, it doesn't sound feasible to me to do no. that. Yeah, you know, because of regulations and rules that they're not test flying it over the UK. Mm-hmm. Of course they're test flying the darn things over the UK. People are witnessing them saying they're probably UFOs, I don't know what they're looking at. Mm-hmm. And that goes that's just for that and that's what we know. It's what we don't know. Probably the fifty or eighty, if not if not more years in advancements in technology that could be flying out there around our skies and we would not know um, what they are. So as far as the professionals are concerned, there is a very high possibility that we are being visited. But now I'm more curious about the UK's advanced aircraft Steve mentioned, because the last thing I want to be doing is to go out there and then misidentify one of our own aircraft. The Tyrannus is an unmanned combat aerial vehicle, which also goes by the nickname of the Raptor, which just sounds cool just on its own, doesn't it? The plane first flew in 2013 and uses stealth technology, has the ability to attack both aerial and ground targets while being controlled by a satellite link anywhere on the Earth. But it also has a maximum speed of Mach 1. Now all this technology doesn't come cheap. 185 million to be exact just for one plane and it isn't expected to enter military service until at least 2030. So there's no doubt that people are actually seeing something but even before advanced aircraft some people were that convinced in UFOs that in the 1930s War of the Worlds was played on the radio for the first time and listeners actually thought it was a real invasion and then totally freaked out. 
Even religious cults got involved with people like Heaven Gates leader Marshall Applewhite and his wife Bonnie Nettles. And these two lunatics managed to convince 38 of the followers to commit suicide all at the same time after they promised that their souls would hitch a ride on an alien spacecraft that was coasting behind the Hellbop comet as it came into Earth's view. There are many different theories to where UFOs come from and they don't all include other planets. People have come up with all sorts of explanations that range from our own government conspiracies to time travellers coming from the centre of the Earth, their demons, or another theory is, is that they come from another dimension. The thing is about theories is that they are just that, theories. People have mistaken everything from Chinese lanterns, birds, clouds, stars, planets, and even these aircraft as UFOs. Okay, let me show you this. As you can see, this is a UFO in the sky over America. You can see that it's round on the top, it has lights round the side, and if I play the video, you'll see that it's actually hovering. Then you see a crowd reacting to what is up there in the sky, it's amazing, this is a proper UFO. I mean, you can't deny it, it's, it, it is something strange. Right? Wrong. If I stop the video, zoom out, what you're actually seeing is an aircraft coming in to land at Manchester Airport, which took me about two minutes to edit and to make it look like a UFO sighting. Just by adding a bit of grain, a bit of movement to the camera and adding a crowd from the internet. Now for someone who lives near the airport, works at one, is a plane spotter or has a lot to do with aeroplanes, you'd have noticed that straight away. But those who don't see them on a regular basis up close, then it's a different story. And if you even put it at night time when the lights are on on the aircraft as it's coming into land from a distance, it does start to look a bit strange. Now I'm not saying everything is a hoax because the universe is too big and too complicated for us to know everything. But what I am saying is that sometimes we as human beings can make a mistake with our judgment and because our mind is a very powerful tool, what you may be seeing and hearing might not be exactly the truth and it could be your eyes and mind playing tricks. It's a bit like when you leave the house, you go up the road and all of a sudden your brain asks you the question, did you lock the front door? God damn brain. With this, I've decided to visit a place here in the UK that has been dubbed a UFO alley in order to see if I can capture anything on film. Well, here we are again on another little adventure, 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 adventure. Jesus Christ. Well, here we are again on a little adventure. Um, going over to a place called Todmorden, which is over in West Yorkshire. Okay, lovely place. I have been before, really nice. A uh, long, long time ago, though. So um, I'm using my trusty sat now. Kit, uh, the odds are I'm going to get lost as usual, but that's just the way it is. That all adds to it. You know it does. You know you love it when I get lost. <laughs> On the way over to Todmorden, and oh, I've got a funny story about Todmorden by the way. Uh, years ago, my mum came home and she says to me, Gary, Scottish by the way, Gary, I've been to this lovely place today. I don't know, have you mum, where have you been? Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, but where, where was it? Oh, it was this lovely wee place. I know mum, but where was it? It was called Todmorden. She says, where? She went, Tom Morden. I mean, you mean Tom Morden. I mean, she's Scottish, she's got no team. <laughs> Apparently, over this, where I'm going to is nicknamed UFO Alley because oh, there's loads of sightings over there. So I thought, what better place to go, which is near me, with somewhere called UFO Alley. <laughs> There's been sightings over there by police officers, uh, members of the public, farmers, etc, etc. There's been cows and cattle and stuff going missing and appearing somewhere else. 
don't think there's been any mutilations, but I might be wrong. Um, there is another story of some guy being found on a on a coal pile years ago, and he had all his arms burned. And do you think that he might have been abducted and then dropped off at the coal pile? Now, the person that went to that case, the police officer, also witnessed a UFO in around about 1980, and the guy was called Alan Godfrey. Now, I tried to contact Alan and ask him, you know, a few questions. And I tried numerous times, and I think even one of his family members watched Curiosity, and they sent his speech to him, but nothing ever came back of it, unfortunately, because when I was speaking to Steve, uh, the UFOologist, um, he said to me that, well, I'll show you what he said to me. Right, back in 1980, we were talking about this earlier, um, apparently there was a close encounter with a UFO over Todmorden by a police officer called Alan Godfrey. Yeah. Now, in professional circles, is this classed as a real verified sighting? In professional circles, in the circles I keep, I'd say no, not necessarily. Though they may have, well, you know, there obviously was a few interesting things. I mean, sightings have taken place over Togmadon, especially around about that time. You know, a good friend around, you know, at that time, uh, Tony Dodd, he'd had his own. He was a police officer as well. He'd had his own ex UFO experience, which I believe he did have. Um, but I did look into the Alan Godfrey case with a number of other well-known researchers around about that time. And the problematics grew throughout the years because the changing in the story. Mm -hmm. Now, for an example, if you go back to the original press documentation from Alan Godfrey, who was allegedly put under hypnosis, and the documents, documentation says that under hypnosis, he, you know, he relived this profound experience of this type of abduction case that took place whilst he was near his police car on a, on a side road in Tothmuddin, and he came across this UFO sat in the middle of the road, spinning, uh, hovering off the ground a couple of feet. The documentation says that he was abducted by a man that looked like a human with a skull cap on, who was called Josef. Right. And he was also, with him, he was abducted by lamp-headed robots and an ugly-looking dog. It is interesting to note, though, that the guy that hypnotised him was called Joseph, not Josef. Right. And may have all skull cap because he was, in fact, Jewish. Right. And... The last time I saw Alan lecture was uh, in, I think it was going back some time now, uh, maybe 10 years ago, where the lamp-headed robots now were these, which he brought along with him, uh, these three foot, three and a half foot cardboard cutouts representing alien greys with wraparound big, big black eyes. The stereotypical alien grey that we often read about and see on television. Now, how we've gone from lamp-headed robots, on his original testimony, that is, mm -hmm. to that tells me that he's fashioning the story, or someone's fashioning this story, um, to make it more credible and fit in with modern-day times. Right. Now, you don't do that with the truth. The truth is the truth, yeah. you know? So, you know, we would expect Alan saying, well, it was lamp-headed robots, and a guy called Joseph, and an ugly-looking dog. You know, yeah. I mean, that story would have retained. And it hasn't done. It's changed. All in all, when we looked at the whole case, including um, the Adamski, the death of Adam, uh, this guy called Adamski, mm -hmm. Zygmunt Adamski, it was found on top of a coal heap. Yeah, I remember that, yeah. You remember, remember and it that, was yeah. surrounding this sort of strange deaths and stuff. I mean, you know, from the work that we did, there's a, there was a good chance that he may have had a heart attack and crawled up on top of the heap to try and get in attention from someone. And um, the strange markings that they said Adamski had strange burn marks on him. Well, he could have crawled under one of the actual pieces of equipment in the coal yard, which had leaky batteries, you know, mm. so battery acid may have been put on, you know, may you may have got on him. As for the reasons why he was missing his, his clothing, his, you know, his shirt, and that was a bit of an unknown mystery, but we don't, we don't just because it's unknown doesn't mean it's paranormal or yeah. something, or ufological in nature. And that was thrown in there. And you think all these different things with, you know, have made up this big picture. But when you start dissecting it and looking at it, you find problematics within them. Yeah. For us, when we look, put all that together, statistically speaking, we'd say, okay, this case needs completely reanalysis, you know, because it's not, I would not be happy to say that is absolute evidence of that happening, 
You know, I wouldn't be happy with that at this moment in time. I've not seen or found any further information to pertain that being more credible. Mm. In fact, it's actually got worse over the years. So there you go. Um, that's what he said about Alan Godfrey's story. Now, obviously, I can't comment on that. You know, you have to make your own mind up on it. Uh, before you do make your own mind up, I always suggest to people that you should go on the internet, have a look around, read up, you know, before you start making decisions on things, read up and then make your own mind up, okay? Rather than just listening to what everybody else tells you, including me. Because I haven't got a clue what I'm going on about half the time. I'm just a filmmaker, I keep telling you all this. The thing is, what I want to know is if UFOs are visiting the Earth, okay? Whether they come from another planet, another dimension, or whatever. You know, wherever they come from. Where is everybody? That's what I want to know. If there's all these aliens that are visiting Earth, I want to know where everybody is. Obviously, when you go on holiday and you go to somewhere, I don't know, Tenerife and that, you go with all your mates, don't you? You know, you all get pissed, you all have a... Why wouldn't it be the same thing for them? You know, I'll come down and go, ah, yeah, we're on holiday, get pissed. I think they would, wouldn't you? Little grey men with the wraparound goggles on, looking cool. Maybe that's what it is, maybe they're on holiday. Could be. I ain't never thought of that. Hey. See, I could be onto something here. So you stick with me. I'll tell you shit. Hey, you don't get this on Sky at night. So the journey from Manchester to Tottenham takes about an hour, and me and Kit seem to disagree a lot. Kit keeps going on about me keeping right. I know, stop going on me, you bloody self. Right, he's getting on my nerves already. Pulling really nice, flashy cars. Oh, shut up. I wish you just f***ing the night. Where are you going? Shut up. I wish you'd shut the f*** up. I'm getting rid of you. Go. I wish you just f**k off. Me and Kit went on like this for a little while. Soon I started to see rolling hills and I knew that I was in Todmorden. Right, I don't know if you can see me or not, I've got the little action cam out. Um, I've decided to try and get a little bit higher up. Because apparently the higher you get the better. So um, I'm going to try and climb, or oh, get as high as I can anyway, is this bugger here. I'm gonna do it but I'll try I'll try for you okay I'll get as high as I can and then we'll take it from there okay I don't even know if I'm gonna get up here to be honest with you so I've got all this equipment <clears throat> and it's um, not the easiest job in the world not the lightest stuff either. And to be fair, when you're as fat as me, you know, it's a killer. So started to climb the hill like it was a scene off Rocky, off I went.
that was the fantasy. This is what the reality was more like. I think I'm dying. Oh my God, I think, I think I'm dying. Well, after the potential heart attack, I decided to get on with some work and looking for UFOs. So the big question is, as are we alone? That's the thing that we all want to know. Are we alone? Um, personal view? I really don't know. It'd be nice to think that we weren't. It's such a big universe and it'd be such a shame for it just to be us. Wouldn't it really? Um, and I think, it, I think it's highly unlikely that we are, that it is just us. There's got to be something else. Whether it's anything that we can understand, I don't know. Maybe we could, maybe we couldn't. They might just be like us. Uh, but at the minute, we've been searching for quite a long time now. I mean, we've got SETI and all that, and we haven't really found anything yet. So maybe we're looking at the wrong thing. Well, you, you know, you'd have thought if you're beaming things out into space and nobody's said hello yet, you'd change your tactics a little bit and maybe look at something else. Because like I say, we haven't really heard anything. You know, we had a few blips where everybody was like, oh my God, something's happened, and it turned out that it wasn't. Uh, we've had a few false calls where people saying, oh, this has been found on Mars, that's been found on Mars, it turned out that it wasn't. There's a lot of theories, a lot of conspiracies regarding UFOs and everything else. So, are we alone? I really don't know. But that's not for me to say. That's uh, This is what this is all about. It's, I'm looking for something, and... It might, it might be the same scenario where when I go somewhere that's haunted and I don't come across anything, I might just be unlucky. doesn't mean that there isn't anything. There's a, there's a lot of people out there that think there is, and they're saying that there is proof, and who am I to say that that proof is not real? Who am I to say that it's not right? Well, I stayed there looking at the sky for about four hours and didn't see anything apart from the odd plane. So, I then decided to go and ask some of the public if they believed. Now, in terms of UFOs, I've never seen one, so I don't really believe in them, no. I do, yeah. No, I don't. I think I do believe, yeah. No, I, I don't. To some degree, I do. I don't believe in UFOs, but I certainly believe that there's some form of life somewhere else in the universe. I can't believe that we are the only physical beings in the universe. Um, I just think there's something else out there. I think there's more to life than just us. And I think the universe is a big place and there's definitely more out there than what, we, than what we've got. I think there's something, but I don't know if it directly is UFOs. In the same way that I have never seen a leprechaun, I don't believe in leprechauns because there's no evidence for leprechauns. So in, this, in, that, in that respect, I don't believe in UFOs. I also threw the same question out onto the internet and everyone had an opinion. But in the end, the perception was 43% did believe, 35% didn't, and the rest were in I don't know camp. However, what most people did agree on is that the universe is just too big for it just to be us. So, where do we go from here? I suppose the only thing left to do is to have a look at night to see if I can see anything different. Well, obviously I didn't have any plans to come out at night to do this, but I thought since it's a clear night and you can see the stars, you can see the moon, why not? Because this is what I do. Will I see anything? I didn't during the day, so will I do at night? I've brought, this time anyway, brought my big lens with me. This is a Sigma 150 to 600 millimeter sports lens. So fingers crossed we should be able to see something. The only thing is it's got a, it's got a bit of a crap f-stop on it uh, for this type of thing. But we'll see what we can see, okay? Other than that, let's get on with it. Right, as you can see, um, I'm now pointing towards the moon, uh, which is up there in its full glory. Uh, well, not full, but it's, it's not far off. Um, gonna zoom in a little bit best I can try and focus a little bit it's the only thing about not bringing a fluid head tripod with you so as you can see 
that is the moon quite close up as well obviously we hear a lot of things about ufos coming from there and there's moon bases on there now from all accounts it's supposed to be on the dark side of the moon as well but the pictures that i've seen actually look like they're quite well lit now i can't see anything on there and this is quite close but obviously the the pictures that you do see again you're talking about photoshop you know you, you can photoshop things um so can they be trusted <sighs> your guess is as good as mine well i've been here about four and a half hours haven't seen anything obviously i've shown you the moon which was in quite good detail um haven't seen anything in the sky other than stars and the odd aircraft and nothing that i would look at and go oh my god that looks so strange because the walls i'd be showing it you now and there isn't there, there simply wasn't anything at all um so basically i've been sat here in the dark outside a haunted church or what's apparently supposed to be haunted with nothing no ghosts no ufos nothing so um are we alone that is the question that i'm asking that's for you to decide so thanks for watching curiosity and don't forget do something that scares you